Hey, it's Mike Spinelli on Road Testament this week. Hit us up on at Drive on Twitter to, uh, if you want, got something to tell us, to uh, got a question, got a comment, got a suggestion for a future show, because here on Road Testament, we talk about cars and uh, all kinds of crap related to cars. <laughs> Today, I have Richard Chang, former uh, ed editor-in-chief of Super Street Magazine, and since then, a columnist in all kinds of publications you know as, say, Auto Week, Racer Magazine. Racer. New York Times. New York Times, and close yeah. to my heart, Zero to 60 magazine. And uh, we were former homies on the former magazine known as Zero to 60, RIP Zero to 60. Yes. Moment of silence. <laughs> moment moment of, of dead air. Yeah. So anyway, today we're in the throes of Lynn Sanity in New York, and uh, because everybody else is, we figured we'd, we'd try to put together a topic related to ins uh, insanity. Lynn Sanity. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is kind it's of an insane insanity. topic. Automotive <laughs> insanity. Um, what's the, so it has to do with bringing him off the bench, right? Basically, yeah, basically it's uh, Jeremy Lynn, you know, nobody on the bench gets called for playing time yeah. and uh, all of a sudden becomes a superstar. Becomes a superstar. So, so, so these are cars that <laughs> they have what it this takes. Cars that have what it takes, but you wouldn't necessarily know it. They might be deep down on the bench, and Way um, down. yeah, you wouldn't necessarily think of them when you think of cars or, to love or buy. Well, you might think of them, or you might think of them, but you might not buy them. <laughs> but you definitely won't think of buying them. Yes, you might be on eBay one day and and looking around and just not buy them. Yeah. So so it actually it started all started with out <laughs> with the Mercure XR4 Ti. Um, what year? Night was that? 86, 85, 86, 87. Yeah. yeah. And why this? Why this? Well, so first of all, it was Ford brought over um, this sort of German, it was the Sierra, I guess, in Europe. Yeah. And they brought it over to America. Bob Lutz brought it over. Bob Lutz brought it over. Yeah. Former yeah. vice chairman of General Motors <laughs> and everywhere exactly. else. Exactly. Oh, ah, Bob Lutz. <laughs> and Ford. And Ford. Um, brought it over uh, because. Basically, because European cars were doing really well, American mm -hmm. cars didn't have anything that was quite like what the Europeans were doing, so they just figured to bring over a European car, put a turbo in it, and um, rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's all made in Germany. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, the other thing is that now just to separate, there was a, an issue because it was a Lincoln Mercury thing, and, and Mercure they tried to. Mercure. Mercure. Right, they tried right. to start a new brand with Mercury. Yeah. Um, so one of the sad things about this car is that the dealers didn't know how to deal with it. It was Lincoln Mercury dealers, so they just assumed that they would be ordering automatics. So they ordered a bunch of automatics, and the automatics sucked, right? I mean, wasn't it like 30 horsepower? Yeah, it was down on power. And it's automatic. Yeah, it's an automatic. So nobody wanted an automatic, but see, they had the, all these automatics sitting on the lot. So probably if you were going to look for one now, you're going to be stuck with an automatic. And Ian, if you go to the next picture, this is sort of why we love it, is that it kind of looks a little bit like, well, a lot like the Cosworth Sierra RS, which was awesome for yeah. its day. It was like a... Never BTC, came to America. BTCC, British Touring Car, champ, I think they, they dominated or won yeah. uh, in that when that came out. So yeah. if you want to pretend like you have a Cosworth uh, Sierra RS by the find an old Mercure. Find. Find. Try find to find one. one yeah. that's, uh, anyway, yeah. So um, Ian, next car. All right. It's from the same era of a car that, that you wouldn't think. Because, I mean, I think that if we were, if, well, we, <laughs> we, were, about this we were both around during that era, but <laughs> I don't know if we had any money to buy actual cars. Um, the um, we would not have bought this one. We would I would have probably bought a GTI. Yeah, because how much was this was this was like eleven, it's like 12 eleven grand. or twelve grand yeah. back then, which would probably be like twenty one <laughs> or twenty two now, something like maybe, that. Maybe maybe even more. more. Yeah, because yeah. I think maybe 25. yeah, maybe like twenty five, twenty six, something like that. But anyway, so it started out as a Dodge Omni, right? So the the um, the really yep. budget Dodge. Uh, Carroll Shelby made a deal with Chrysler to beef up these cars. They started out with the GLH just had a hotter cam and um, what was just higher compression and what, what, there was something else that it was a... Uh, and then a couple years later, um, they, had a, they had a turbo option. Right, so they that added was, a turbo. It's like 150 horsepower, right? Yeah, something and that like was that. like zero to 60 in like eight something seconds. 8 which, which was amazing back then. It was yeah, hot that for was, like 1986. Yeah. That, was, that was amazing. It was like, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so um, then they did the GLHS. And S was some more, I guess. It was like, goes like hell, some more. Um, 
that had a uh, much, it was much hotter. It was 176 yeah, horsepower. You needed a helmet like to drive yeah, that. It was so hot, you needed a helmet. Was. And that was, it's crazy, but zero to 60 in like 6.7 seconds, which was insane it's for a car. It's fast now, battery. right? Yeah. It's, I, mean, I mean, it's good. It's pretty fast yeah. now. I mean, that's sort of, that's like GTI range now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. So, um, this is a car, though, that you wouldn't have thought to, to buy back then. I mean, if you could even find one now. I mean, they only made, I think, a thousand of them or something. The GLHs, they probably made 3,500 in their do- yeah, the maybe top like year. Yeah, maybe 15,000 of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. But you could probably, I mean, they're, once in a while they go on sale, you could find them. Um, but we wouldn't buy them. We wouldn't buy them. And it's not a car we would have bought <laughs> even then. So, but if we had given it a chance, taken it off give the it bench, a chance. put it on the give court, it a <laughs> right. really, give it a chance. <laughs> All right. All right, Ian, what's next? Oh, <laughs> Fiero GT. All right, so this is the last, last year they did the Fiero. So, you know, the Fiero came out as an economy uh, sports car. Right. Um, had a lot of problems in the beginning, right? Had a lot, some problems in the beginning. Also had a, the subframe out of a Chevette. I don't know if you remember the <laughs> Chevette. Kind of not exactly the sportiest right. thing that they made, but not terrible. And by the time this came along, this is the GT in uh, about 88, um, it was actually really good. I mean, look at these flying flying buttresses <laughs> over here. <laughs> no, I mean, it was a, it was a good, it's a mid-engine car. It, it was it fairly great. quick. It was yeah. a mid-engine car, and they worked out all the suspension stuff. So by then, but people had stopped buying them. Yeah. And um, I mean, this came out, I think, um, you know, when uh, production was pretty much just yeah. dwindling. It was dwindled. Yeah, it was I mean, dwindled. It was sort of, you know, DOA. Right, right, it was DOA. Yeah. So this came out and actually is a really good car. And if you go um, you go online and look around to people do engines for these things, I mean, I got passed by one of these in Detroit. <laughs> I was driving. I was like, what the hell is that? What were you driving? I was... <laughs> I was probably driving a rental. It was like some oh, kind okay. of rental. Right. So I wasn't like, right, you know, so I wasn't like, I wasn't like out to you up. You're right, oh, yeah, right, right, right. No, yeah. but I was like, what the hell is that? And then I saw, then I was like, wow, that's a, that's a fair GT, that thing. But I would never, ever have bought this car. No. Never. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it now. We well, probably wouldn't buy it no, now, but you would never give it a chance no. if you just took this thing off the bench. No, maybe I, maybe I should. Yeah. I don't know. You might, you might <laughs> consider it. So I don't know. I, that's, that is that. All right. So. Now we're getting a little higher end. Yeah, here. this is probably the closest to some, something I would tap. <laughs> now by tap, you yeah, mean, I mean, but the, it, so this uh, is the um, it's the Mercedes Benz 2.3 16 valve, 16 valve, um, Cosworth engine. That was that 87, 88. Yeah. The, it was the homologation for DTM, right? Yeah, yeah, the one in Germany. Yeah, yeah in German and Germany. So I mean, I don't know. All right, wait, wait a minute. Ian, just one second. This is, you're jumping the gun. That was the evolution. Of course, so we'll, yeah. we'll get to that in a second. You're not going to... So wait a minute. But can't I, backtrack We now. can't back... Yeah. But although, I don't know. I think I would... If I had the money right. back then, I think I might have bought one of these. This is what I mean. This is the closest one. I mean, back then, definitely. If, I think if I had the money back then... If you had the 50 I grand or whatever. Probably would buy, I would think about... But now, though, you know, it's, it's got that old Merc look. Um, it's been over. It has been overlooked, and you see them on eBay once in a while, right? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they show up, and you go, "Wow, that's awesome!" And you, like for one second, you you think about that you might buy it, but you yeah. never would. No, no. But I, I would. I, I I might come close, but actually, I, I do. I do know. Didn't uh, didn't uh, somebody just bought one of these? Oh really? Oh. Somebody I know actually just bought <laughs> oh, one. Really? Can't remember. Uh, we have to. Anyway, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, this so, was off the list. So this was off the list. But anyway, Ian, hit the next one. So anyway, this is why we love it. Is because you know we were talking about the XR4Ti and the Sierra Cosworth connection, the Evolution Two connection. It, this is this car was so badass. We don't need to go too much yeah, into detail. Yeah, I, I mean, but you know, if you're into classic DTM stuff, made famous it. by the Senna drive against. Uh, yes. You know, that, that one mark race where he pretty much dominated. Kicked, kicked everybody's yeah, butt. He yeah, he dominated in the, in the wet. In the wet. In the wet. <laughs> as, as Senna is wont to do yeah, once in a while. All right, next. Oh, BMW. Hot eight, stuff. Hot stuff. So that's the 840i. Or 840. This, this might is, be the 840ci, CI, the zero. European one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So why this Why this one, do you think? I mean, when it came out, it was, it, I mean, it was. Uh, super expensive, right? It was right? super expensive. It was an amazing, uh, for BMW design, I mean, it was the wedge. Yeah. BMW just outside of the M1 just didn't do wedge shapes. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, the you know it was the V8, and they had uh, the 850i was the V12. Yeah, they did the V12. They took the basically they took the powertrains from the 7 series, and they messed around with them a little bit. Oh, there, there it is in the back. I mean, it is a really good looking car. And the thing is that now you can get one for like 20 grand. Uh, even cheaper, yeah. Really? Oh, I you mean, can totally get it for cheaper. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Cause, I mean, because like it was, at the time it was, the it, was out, it was outfitted with all these electronic, like uh, all these new electronics. It was sort of that age where everything was getting like, you know, whiz bang, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. computerized. So, um, so in so other well. words, a lot of crap to go wrong. <laughs> so right. like, you, I mean, basically like, you would buy this and then you would spend what you paid for it every couple right. of years to keep it going. Right, right. I mean, it's, look, but I love this, I love this car. And then you also get, there's, a, there's also the, you know, um, you'll have a late, I mean, there's a certain 80s or like 90s look to it that, yeah. you know, kind of want to like a popped polo shirt. Or, <laughs> well, it's like, it's, like, like a, you know. it's like the wedge shape seven series. It's from an era, right, you know right, what I mean? Right. It's like, it's it's got that, It's it definitely speaks to a certain era. and. I really like it. I think it, it looks probably the, it might be the best looking car from this era that if you look at all the cars around today and still look at this, it still looks fresh. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. All right, what's next? A wild card. All right, this is sort of a wild card because I would never have thought to buy a Volvo S60R, but they're pretty badass. I mean, so really far are. down the bench. I didn't. Even, I didn't even see <laughs> this car. It was so far down. This the car, bench. yeah, it was. It, it, this car didn't even suit up. <laughs> no. It was. It was down yeah. down at the end of the bench in like a sweatsuit. Yeah. Hey. It was like, hey guys, let yeah. me. No, but I, I mean seriously, it. Um, you know, Cosworth did a version of this engine for racing. I mean, honestly, this was this was pretty. It's yeah. pretty badass. And actually, it was at the time Volvo. They didn't have an auto. They didn't have a, a manual that could handle the torque. So they actually put in um, the automatic is the one to get on this one. Oh. So, um, oh wait a minute. This well, is that's, except this is the manual. So don't get that. no. But I, I actually no. I put I, I set it up wrong. But I really I put this in because I wanted to show this the, the really cool treatment. I mean, this, um, this design was you know yeah. it was when Volvo started to right you know, change and, from the box right and then again don't forget this is the the platform that underpinned almost everything that ford has now mm. too i mean it well at least up until it had the was the ford 500 was on this and like this flex was this oh, bigger right, right. you know all this stuff but anyway yeah. that i think the um, s60r is one of those cars that you look at and you go wow i could buy that but i would never buy it so in basketball terms this is sort of the the smart car that you know, has the, the high IQ, you it, wouldn't really. Right, you wouldn't let, I mean, you might let, them, maybe this, well, <laughs> what, the Harvard educated point guard, right, maybe, right. maybe this is Lindsay. Yeah. All, right. All right, what's next? Oh, we are coming to the to the end. This was a good one. The Vigan. You, you, you brought this up, I, I so, hadn't thought of it, but this is a good so one. So the Saab yeah. 93 Vigan, what like this probably was 2002. Actually, Ian is the uh, is the Vigan expert around here. 2002, right? Oh, so it was 99 to 2002. 99 to 2002. Uh, what was the horsepower? Was 258 or something on this? 230 and 250. 230 and 250 at the end. So you know the Vigan. I like I remember back back in 2002 configuring these. <laughs> And then just going, I would never on buy your that. Dial up, on your dial-up. <laughs> on my dial-up. Dial <laughs> this my, is taking forever. On my VT1000. And, um, it was like, no, I mean, I, I think the Vigan uh, being born from jets, Vigan actually means what? Uh, grease lightning or something? What does it mean? No, it means thunderbolt. Smoke hot lightning. Thunderbolt, right? Yeah. Um, it is, there's the jet that it's born from. <laughs> Um, the Vigan was a pretty badass car. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, it, it, this was one of the last cars with real Saab appeal. Like, GM had already owned it by this point, right? I mean, this was sort of the, Sa the GM years. And, you know, RIP to Saab now. So if you were going to buy one of these, you would be probably screwed if you got into an accident. They might total it right, in, right. no matter what happens. Because all the, all the, can't get parts. the, the parts are different. They're special, yeah. special order parts. And, but, um, but really good for its day. A good car. I mean, handling, it handles like mad. It was light, yeah, relatively yeah. speaking. Yep. What was it 3,100? 3,100 3, 3, yeah. pounds. So, yeah. well, light-ish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say right, about so the yeah. yeah. Light-ish. Yeah, yeah. But um, anyway, there's the Vigan, and yeah. um, so and the only jet in the Swedish army. That is their jet. That's their jet. Linsanity. And that's it. And that's it. That's our. Um, 
hit us up at at drive if you've got Lynn Sanity and you you have a car that you hadn't have thought of buying that you might give a chance get it off the bench maybe <laughs> maybe put it on the court with some other players and if you own one of these hey if you own one of these definitely send us the up. hate mail we'll yeah yeah also um you know if uh, when the big players come back see this is the other thing this sort of we can extend the bad metaphor even further mellow but, me, yeah when when the uh, the sort of the, the, the hotshot players come back is Lynn gonna be able to operate with oh, them? Oh wow! Wow! So if you've got a GTI comparison test, maybe do a little comparison test with a Vigan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's Road Good Testament stuff. this week. Good stuff. Thanks, Rich Chang, Fuck. for showing up. See you guys next week. <laughs>